good whenever it is. So today I'm going to talk just about neutrons, what neutrons are in my model. So I don't think it actually differs much, as much as people would like to pretend. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so such neutrons in my model mass. Okay, let's see. Let's let's do quark math actually. Let's play their game for a second. Because I like to have my model conform to all known facts and all known other models at the same time as being a fresh look. Okay, so We'll do it this way. We'll use red and blue, and green is combined and neutral, because usually I use yellow and blue, but for green, but blue. So let's say uh, what's this? It's really matter actually, because neutrons and anti-neutrons the same. But anyways, that's going to be an up. That's going to be an up. No, down, down. This is an up. Down quark, down quark, up quark. Charges neutralize. These two neutralize this. This is a charge. Axis of charge, axis of charge, three axes of charge. Not an end of charge. That's why those quarks look like weird things. And I talked about that in my other video. This I think that this makes way more sense. Axes of charge coming out there and out there out there and out there just sucking in they cancel each other out and what are you left with you are left with kind of nothing right you've got no charge left and I don't even know because I don't study quantum mechanics I don't know how you guys represent a neutron if there's nothing left the charge is all gone does that become spin is this the idea that it becomes spin those two charges which is like sensible a photon right okay right a photon is a positron and an electron in oscillation in a way so electron positron oscillation electron positron oscillation okay so now there's a neutron and a neutron is two photons trapped over their own gravity <clears throat> interesting a neutron should be larger than a proton even though it's heavier and gravity would shrink it but because it's at limit the same way that a black hole or the event horizon of a black hole is measured by the surface area that's the way you look at it is by surface area so this was one area one infinitesimal and then it got a second one wrapped around it so now it's two of them and they weigh twice as much as now they're hanging out but there must be some kind of interference between these two photons like self-interference or something like that like perturbations that they cause or whatever that's my excuse because it doesn't really want to be a neutron okay and this is what that neutron is what everything gets compressed into you take a proton you shove this proton back down the I mean you take a hydrogen atom which this will turn into you take a hydrogen atom you shove the proton the electron back into the nucle nucleus and what do you have you have a neutron this is what neutronium is. This is what neutron stars are made of. Neutron stars are the last thing you see before you don't see anything. Because it's a black hole event horizon. So this is the neutron. Right? But a neutron doesn't want to stay that way. It gets internal perturbations or whatever. And what does it do? It breaks apart. And what was a photon comes apart and becomes uh, up is positive. So now we have a positive 
and then out way out here the electron shell is the compensatory negative this is total holographic principle the circle of inversion is what we need to be looking at okay because you had this neutralized this is a positive there's its reciprocal the negative Okay, neutron decays into hydrogen. This is it's kind of important, okay, because this is a process. Why is it, people talk about protons, it's like protons are eternal. Protons don't exist by themselves. Every proton has an electron that matches it. This is a composite, this is a process. This is a process of inflow to our dimension or our space and then outflow. This is a convergence, it's positive charge. This is a divergence, this is negative charge. Negative charge, divergent, flows into the convergence, flows into the convergence, flows into convergence. On the other side of the universe, we have a antiproton and a positron to compensate on the other side of the membrane read my other things but this is like super fundamental because look at the neutron has everything contained in it the neutron's like a little it's like a double universe the thing okay the proton is like a universe well not the proton the hydrogen atom okay you have cosmic voids spewing out neutrons that decay into hydrogen right and that hydrogen slowly slowly flows because of gravity until it gets denser and denser and denser the proton this is the density this pulling space towards it converging space because space is converged we have a positive charge because we have a positive charge we have a negative charge okay protons do not exist by themselves they're not autonomous things they're part of a composite part of a process the neutron is a thing in itself but it's suspended in time and you can't just stay in time forever Okay, this is a process. This is why it's stable. It's because it's a process. Neutron is trying to remain the same all the time, have nothing change. That's not good. This is things changing all the time. It's a flow. It's a process. This is the big difference. And this is what happens is the neutron decays, turns into hydrogen. The hydrogen slowly gets compacted back into a neutron. The neutron expands out. That expanding out is exactly compensatory for the gravity that got caused, which is why cosmological constant is automatically fine-tuning via the mechanism of each neutron that crosses the event horizon, touches the event horizon, becomes a vacuum energy, re-emerges as a neutron, which decays into hydrogen, and then does the entire trip again. Okay, it seems very simplistic. This notion is just like, oh, well, that's like, what did you just like? Oh, a neutron falls out, let's shove a neutron back in. Do the math on it, look at it. It makes perfect sense. It's the simplest solution to all of this. Okay, 